shall now go on to our next speaker, Dr. Naren Shetty, who is the uh, head of the Department of Cataract and Refractive Services and the Vice Chairman of Nara and Netralia Group of Hospitals based at Bangalore. And he's going to talk on a very relevant topic, 66 Unhappy Patients, My Management Plan. I'm sure he'll have to tell us things very different what, what you have already heard. So on to you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, on the sunset, I'd like to thank you actually, for giving me this opportunity. So, okay, so let's decode an unhappy 2020 patient. Now, all of us have been trying to target a 2020 vision. Is that a correct target or are we missing something? So most of the time we keep looking at the surface and we actually miss the whole picture. So when you look at this uh, two patients uh, here, uh, when you look at the topography, patient one, you simply go ahead with the cataract surgery, it should be all good. But in patient two, uh, if you don't look closer and you go ahead with cataract surgery, definitely you're going blind into uh, something and you will land in the trouble. So the point is, if you look closer at patient two, if you look at the epithelium, there's a lot of irregularity of uh, epithelium which is going on and uh, we need to treat this first and then move ahead. So whenever there is irregular epithelium, what happens? The, the, the K values, what you get is very unreliable and uh, because of which the post-operative outcome will not be that great. Especially if you're going for a trifocal uh, patient, you will really land in a suit. Now, when we look at corneal epithelial remodeling uh, post-cataract surgery, uh, if you can see this data, basically uh, the epithelial distribution index can vary from patient to patient from eye to eye. So we need to be really careful on how we handle uh, these kind of patients. And if you have a set of patients who have good epithelium, good corneal nerves, you're all good to go. But if you have patients like this, where you have a lot of irregular epithelium and abnormal corneal nerves, if you do not treat it, you will definitely have uh, abnormal wound healing post-surgery. It's actually a beautiful and a, or an excellent uh, cocktail uh, for a disaster. So basically, it's like a... a if you do have a bad OSDI score, you have poor uh, nerve regeneration. This leads to poor wound healing post-surgery and which in turn causes bad optics and the patient will complain a lot of glare and halos post-surgery. So let's look over a case. Here's a 45-year-old uh, male patient uh, with uh, such vision with cataract and uh, he, he was uh, planning, he wanted a multifocal IOL implanted in his eyes. So these were the scans and uh, this is the EKR map. And if you look at the uh, epithelial maps, you can see a lot of irregularities. So you need to treat this first. So what we did is we put the patient on uh, doxycycline for a month and uh, the steroids and lubricants and also cyclosporin and reviewed the patient at four to six weeks. And then when we looked at the, uh, the epithelium, it beautifully healed. And then we went ahead with the planning of the surgery. Now, when we look at uh, just monofocal lens, let's not look at the premium lenses. When we look at monofocal lens, we have you know traditional and aspheric. Traditional has positive uh, spherical aberrations and the aspheric has either zero or negative uh, AS. So when you look at the cornea, basically it has positive assay and the conventional has positive assay. So this in turn amplifies it and creates a lot of high order aberrations and this leads to poor vision, especially during uh, the night. So when we look at the aspheric lenses, we have the negative and the zero. These are the list of lenses which are available. Uh, now, a simple decision tree on which lens to use, let's say if it is a prior hyperopic LASIK, then you can go with a, a traditional or a positive SA lens. If you have a prior myopic LASIK, you can go with a negative SA. Now, if no refractive surgery was done, uh, if there is a higher chance of decentration, always go with a zero SA, because even if the lens rotates, it won't cause much trouble to the eyes. And if there is a less chances of uh, decentration and you are more concentrating on depth of field, then you can go with the zero essay. If you're looking at image quality, you can go with the negative essay. Now uh, let's look at uh, a multifocal or a trifocal lens patient. How do we turn these uh, six six frowns into six six uh, smiles? So the first and foremost is to prevent it. How do we prevent this is to choose the right patient. It's very important. We need to have certain basic equipments to do so. Uh, first and foremost is a good sinus examination. Actually, you have one half the battle. Uh, always look at the tear film. 
Uh, also look at the pupil size, uh, um, keep it uh, keep it arranged about three millimeters to five millimeters, photopic and scorotic uh, respectively. Uh, angle alpha, uh, try to keep it within uh, six millimeters. If it is always borderline, um, always you can go for the EDOF lenses. They do a fantastic job and a little more forgiving. Uh, always go with optical biometry uh, because it's not uh, person driven. Always go with, uh, uh, you need to do a topography and also look at the epithelium also to make sure there's not, uh, you know, there's some kind of inflammation happening and also there's a lot of epithelial irregularity. We need to regularize it and then go ahead with the surgery. Please do not forget a macular OCT. It's become a pretty standard for any cataract surgery because you can easily miss out certain uh, subtle changes uh, uh, in the macula like epithelial and membrane uh, uh, when you do your fundus examination. I will formula, I think uh, for as of now, uh, the Barrett's Unisol 2 works uh, in most of the cases, it works wonderfully. So you can just stick to one formula as of now. And this is the most important step is counseling. You really need to sit with the patient, you know, uh, give some chair time, explain to the patient and make sure the patient has more realistic expectations. That way you're rest assured that patient is always happy. Now, uh, if at all the patient does have astigmatism, please have a threshold. Anything more than uh, 0.5, please do uh, implant a toric lens, especially in these trifocal and multifocal patients. So if you have a macular system, fantastic. It really makes uh, your job so much more easier and it makes it more accurate, in fact. So when you look at mark, uh, uh, when you compare a marker and a macular system, actually the quantity of vision, not much of difference. But the quality of vision, there is a significant difference, especially when you're doing uh, planning a trifocal lenses. And there are a lot of publications on the same. So let's go over a series of cases. So here's a 6 unhappy patient with a lot of uh, glare and halos. And if you look at the scans, there's a lot of abrasions ar arising from the cornea. So we look at the tears. Uh, actually, there's a lot of scratching occurring from here. So we put the patient on uh, dry eye treatment and the patient healed beautifully. His visual quality also improved. Following. The next thing is, again, a post-multifocal IOL patient complained of a lot of glare and halos. And when you look at the scans or the optical quality, it's pretty bad. And when you look closer, actually, there was a decentration of the lens. So the, the, any decentration, uh, you know, the smallest uh, change in decentration, uh, anything like 0.7 and more is a, of, you know, a lot of this, uh, halos and glare because uh, it, it really affects the quality of vision. Now, PCO is something that uh, affects uh, these kind of premium lenses on the early stage. Please do not shy away from uh, doing a YAG uh, in these uh, uh, trifocal patients uh, uh, if the patient complains of some kind of vision disturbance. See, uh, so here's one more patient who's come uh, with a lot of glare and halos, and uh, this is a post uh, monofocal IOL implant. And uh, the we look perfect, everything looks good. Even the visual quality looks fantastic, no issues at all. And if, if when we look at the retina, again, the fundus looks good, even the OCT looks normal. So we thought, okay, let's dig deeper. So we did a wide field uh, ERG and again, it was within limits. So we did a uh, multiple uh, ERG and we could see a reduced density of the first order response. So basically it was an, an occult macular dystrophy. Uh, leading to post-operative glare. So sometimes, you know, uh, this usually ha rarely happens, but these kind of machines usually, I mean, they can pick up these pre maculopathy uh, you know, um, so this will really save you in uh, handling premium IOLs. So one more way of handling, you know, making sure that your, all your patients are happy is to have a questionnaire given to the patients before the surgery. Uh, basically, this will help you to categorize which character, uh, which kind of a personality uh, is the patient. If the patient is normal, you simply go ahead. If it is a medical, then you can always, you need to sit with the patient and make sure do not counsel the patient alone. The attender should be with them. Attender, be it a friend, family, anyone, so that whenever you do counsel, they really understand and you can always you know uh, speak better if at all the patient has some kind of psychological issue uh, they will uh, the, because the attender was there during a counseling so the the conversations will go much more uh, smoother uh, but definitely when there's a red flags uh, please uh, you refer the patient to a psychologist uh, and uh, you wait for three months and if, after everything sets it down you need plan for the surgery so basically to summarize, uh, uh, you know, to have a happy, uh, I mean, to avoid an uh, unhappy 2020 patient, always choosing the right patient is very important. 
counseling also is very crucial make sure the patient has uh, more realistic expectations if you put an unhappy patient into our unhappy patient into the equation unhappiness is equal to expectations divided by reality so always the expectations should be more realistic so that the patient is happy the next thing is highly demanding patients uh, uh, try to avoid or make sure that you counsel them uh, well before they we go ahead with the surgery always have a closer look for any abnormality and a good practice does not mean just having uh, uh, just having more patients you need to have more patients too uh, keep your happy patients close and unhappy patients closer so whenever you do have unhappy patients make sure you see them more often and and make them understand that you are with them till the time they are happy thank you for your time wonderful talk dr naren you covered all the things which was not covered in the uh, other talks and that was really very nice uh, expert panel you all have anything to add i just have one question before we go on to the next speaker uh, uh, dr sandeep would also take or dr ramurthy uh, what are your thoughts about uh, indigenous uh, multifocal iols versus modern day iols uh, as far as uh, the dysphotopic symptoms or dissatisfaction among patients definitely ma'am i think uh... um i think it was uh, uh, the not just the patient complaining the doctor implanting the older multifocal lens they are so scared uh, you know even in big institutes they are always scared they don't know what's going to happen post surgery and uh, you know how, who's going to complain i mean there are i have seen patients who have been happy with it also but there are a large chunk of patients who complain a lot a lot but with the current generation it's so fantastic uh, i mean if you just follow these set of rules Uh, yeah. they do so so good and uh, i mean you're eager to find who's your next patient to put it in yeah. because they really enjoy it and they'll be they'll be your brand ambassadors in the future yeah. definitely yes dr ramurthy you have anything to add oh uh, just a very beautiful talk i think you know uh, we have come to a stage when operating on very early cataracts or to be frank relax is becoming inevitable you know patients whose children are getting operated for lasik what about me they have a plus 2.5 plus 2 they are 50 55 their lens is clear and uh, maybe putting in a good multifocal or a multifocal toric uh, latest versions as you said is an option but these are the patients where it's a challenge both for the surgeon as well as the lens and uh, you know their expectations because uh, is quality of vision any compromise on that is uh, not something that is acceptable do you uh, do something extra on this subset of patients as far as the pre operative workup is concerned uh, it, it, basically i i would say is uh, i would put more chair time sir with the patient because uh, what i try to see one thing we have to make make the patient realize is they keep thinking okay i wear the glasses i have to have this kind of vision this is what my outcome would be i feel the best way is so you remove your glasses now how you see things you see your distance you see your near you see everything i'll make sure that you know post surgery you will do fantastic without you know uh, glasses you should be able to manage if if we say like that so what happens they'll always think okay without glasses yeah i'm they'll keep comparing without glasses with glasses especially in very early cataract stages where they are almost like 66 uh, and uh, they, you know n6 with the glasses so such patients we have to take their glasses out and then say okay this is what you are now without glasses i'll make sure that you will do good so i think when we say these small words and small counseling and people they do fantastic sir and plus they have to be highly motivated sir that is the first criteria that they should be highly motivated then then we can plan that sir yes dr vasavda Itra, congratulations! You have been conducting very well, and thank you. I apologize, I need to leave, and sorry, Kamal, Susan, and uh, Jagdish, I can't hear you. But Itra, wonderful job you are doing, and we are so proud. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You, thank, you, thank you, Doctor, for uh, staying thank with you. us, and uh, we gained a lot from you. Thank you. Uh,